I'm Bill Kinney, and this is part seven of a series of many videos that I'm making about parametric curves and teaching you about parametric curves in the context of using Mathematica. Hopefully you can get benefit no matter what your goal is here. In this particular video, ultimately what we're, what we're going to focus on is calculating the distance traveled and the speed of travel for straight line motion at a constant speed. We've been using functions, in fact linear functions, to try to model straight line motion at a constant speed. Now we're going to calculate distance traveled and speed of travel. We're also going to illustrate how to think about this calculation through a couple new mathematical commands called graphics and line. Before I get into that, I want to highlight one more thing. Going back to my introductory video, part zero, this code right here is about what I call hitting a target. It's a fair amount of Mathematica code. When you run it, it makes an animation showing a spaceship, you might say. I Again, I tried to make this look like the Starship Enterprise, though I failed in doing that, this ship over here, flying through space, shooting a laser beam, hitting a target, and making it explode. What I want you to notice, two things about the ship's motion, the blue curve there, it's not a straight line, especially at first it's curving very much, and it's also not at a constant speed, it's going fairly slow at first and then it speeds up faster and faster. We're ultimately after trying to model and understand more complicated kinds of motion than straight line at a constant speed. But we need to start simple. So again, here was the situation. We were using parametric equations, two linear functions that give you the x and y coordinates of a point that's moving. A person is traveling between the point 2, negative 1 and the point negative 1, 3 in, in one second at a constant speed. You should draw this picture if you haven't done so before or if you can't visualize it immediately. We're going to suppose in particular that the distance is now measured in meters, not feet. And I've got a couple new questions here. How far did the person travel and what is the person's speed? So we want to answer those questions. Before I do that, I want to also clear up a couple other things, minor issues with, in particular, table. When I used table in the past to try to plot points, these were 11 points on the line of motion. I noted how a table automatically assumes that your iterator, in this case the n, increments up by 1 each time. Though, because the motion was over the interval from time equals 0 to time equals 1, I had to adjust for that in table by multiplying n by 0.1 before plugging that quantity into these two functions, f and g. I want to highlight that you can adjust for this in a different way. You can instead make n go from 0 to 1 increment it by 0.1 by putting a comma 0.1 there and changing this to a 1 and then getting rid of the 0.1s in here. That would be another way you could think about calculating these points that are on the graph. Alright, what did the graph look like? Again, here was what it looked like. We used ultimately manipulate, show, and parametric plot along with list plot to make this particular plot right here showing the motion of the person as they walk. Time goes from 0 to 1. This is the time amount, what v is. That's the motion. You can see it's along a straight line at a constant speed. We want to figure out how far did the person go and how fast did they go during that one second of time. Think about that. I would encourage you to see if you can figure, out, figure it out before I calculate it here in Mathematica. You should be able to do that. Here's a hint, add a little bit more to the drawing. What I want to show you now, though, is I want to make a drawing, a static drawing in Mathematica, showing a right triangle that's a natural thing to draw based on the line segment that the person moves over. All right, so how are we going to do that? I'm going to use a new command called graphics, along with another new command called line. And here's the basic syntax. Graphics is a Mathematica command, some code that is going to return a graphics object, a picture. It needs input. Um, in this case, thick and black are, as usual, formatting inputs. Line is going to allow us to draw a line, and in fact, more than one line. It'll allow us to draw three lines together to make a right triangle. There are other kinds of inputs that graphics can take, like circle and uh, disk, I believe, 
are some other examples of inputs that I can take besides line to make other kinds of graphic objects. But I'm going to use line. Inside line you need a list of points, points you're going to plot lines between. And if you go back up to the problem, we're starting at the point 2, negative 1, going to the point negative 1, 3. So I'm going to put 2, negative 1 in here, then comma negative 1, 3. That's going to draw a line segment between those two points. There it is without an ax, a system of axes. I want to draw more than just this though. I want to draw a line segment going straight down from negative 1, comma 3 down to it would be negative 1, comma negative 1. And finally, I also want to draw a horizontal line now going back to the starting point, back to the point 2, comma 1. I can put a comma 2, 1 in here as well. So now I, oops, 2, negative 1, excuse me. Now I have a right triangle. Um, that's a, a very natural right triangle to ultimately, are you with me? Use the Pythagorean theorem to try to calculate the length of the hypotenuse, which will be the distance traveled. Let me do um, a couple other things in here. I'm going to add a set of axes to this. I can put an option, comma, axes, arrow, true. There's a set of axes. Um, I think I'll go ahead and put the same plot range as before. I'll copy and paste this stuff down here. Label the axes. And now I'd also like to show you that you can use some drawing tools. Click on the output there. Go up to Graphics, Drawing Tools. And we can add a little bit to this picture. Though if we re-entered the code, then the drawing would go away. What I'm going to draw in here, first of all, is a well, I could have done this with graphics line as well, but I'll show you it with the drawing tr drawing tools. I'll make a little square down here at the right angle, showing that it is a right angle. If I can make that horizontal. There we go. It wasn't. It's not a perfect square, but oh well. So there we go. Uh, I overdrew it a little bit too. We can also put in numbers giving you these side lengths. This side down here is length 3. We can put a 3 there. We can put a number over here. This side has length 4. And finally, using the Pythagorean theorem, we can click the symbol thing here. Click over here, and we can now use this palette over here. There's a square root feature on this. Make it bigger so you can see it right there. There's a square root button. I think I should be able to get that square root in there. Using the Pythagorean theorem, if you don't remember what it says, look it up. The length of the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Square root of 16 plus 9 is the square root of 25 is 5. So that's the distance traveled. Okay, I'll get rid of the drawing tools here now. The distance traveled is 5, don't forget your units, meters. All right. What about the speed? We are assuming the motion is at a constant speed. At a constant speed, the speed is the word speed three times here. I'll write it like this. Speed equals fraction um, distance traveled divided by time elapsed. I'll just write distance divided by time. Speed is a ratio. It's measuring how fast you're traveling. Okay. If the time is fixed and you go a further distance, then the speed is going to be greater. If the distance is fixed and you take less time, divide by a smaller number, the speed is going to be greater. That should make some intuitive sense, especially if you're in physics. If you're not in physics, think about it with a lot of different examples. So since that's distance divided by time, when we assume a constant speed, we're going to get 5 meters divided by 1 second, and that's going to be 5 meters per second, is how you would write that. So that is our answer for the constant speed in this problem. In the next video, we are going to consider 
I think we'll consider non-constant speed along a straight line first before we think, think about curved motion.